What's going on, everybody? Boy, it has been quite a while, huh? I apologize. <laughs> I've been busy. I've been doing other things. But I've read the requests, and it's been, Evan, we want more videos. We want more food content. We want more of you in your kitchen. Here I am in my kitchen for you at your service. So, I've had a lot of things going through my mind. And, well, as you can see, we've got some coffee paraphernalia here. And I'm gonna start this off and preface it by saying, I'm not a coffee expert, okay? Um, I'm not a co coffee connoisseur. I don't even drink that much coffee. I do like coffee, but I don't drink a ton of it. But as is kind of the tendency when I get into something, I, <laughs> I do some digging and I get into it. And I like to explore. And one thing that's become apparent to me in talking to a lot of other people who are very, very enthusiastic about coffee and are avid coffee drinkers, many of them are friends of mine, I've been surprised how little, I don't want to say how little they know, right? because I don't know much, but it's become evident that I've done a little bit more exploration than, exploration than some of them have. Basically, I would like to just show you a few things today that I think you might find interesting, you might find helpful, you might find useful. So let's begin by talking first and foremost about the coffee, the beans. Now, of course, when it comes to coffee, you could buy whole beans, you could buy uh, pre-ground coffee, you could buy instant coffee. If Lee Priest is watching, do you know Lee Priest? The dude loves instant coffee. Um, I'm not so much a fan. <laughs> I do appreciate what I would call a good cup of coffee. And when it comes to instant coffee, it's only so good that it's gonna get. So when we're talking today, we're pretty much talking about pre-ground or whole bean coffee. And as you can see, because I have a grinder here, we're talking whole bean. Now, in recent years, coffee has become like craft beer. There's pretty much an endless number of coffee roasters out there. Uh, in addition to coffee that's commercially available. And I'm, again, I'm not a connoisseur. If you're into wine, the expert is the sommelier. I don't know what the equivalent is in the coffee world, but I'm not that guy. But I've got a few things that I've tried that I really, really like, and I'm gonna share it because maybe you'd like it too. So a lot of the coffee I tend to drink is more of an espresso roast. I like really, really rich, darker coffee, um, but I have here a grinder. Right, because one thing I've noticed is when you buy pre-ground coffee, it's just a little bit lackluster. It just kind of seems to lose its pop faster, and you just seem to get a better brew using fresh coffee that you grind fresh. And again, when it comes to grinders, there's all sorts of money you could spend. You could spend thousands of dollars on a coffee grinder. I'm not going to do that. Most of you watching are probably not going to do that. This Breville, right? Now, there's different types of grinders. There's conical, and there's kind of like a, you know, basically uses like a blade, which you don't want to use. This is a conical grinder. You can set the grind size with this knob on the side, and it's like, I don't know, 50 plus different settings because you're turning a knob, right? So it's, it's all just a different variation. This is a very, very popular one for most of us, more than adequate, and maybe it costs 150 bucks or so. Um, so depending on price point, maybe it's feasible, maybe it's not. But like I said, you could spend all sorts of money on grinders. Uh, but having this is really, really nice because you could use whole bean coffee. And aside from having fresher grind with whole bean coffee, it's also going to save you some money. Because um, when you look at it on a per pound basis, whole bean coffee is generally cheaper. And when you start to get into all these different roasts, it's all whole bean, right? All these people who are putting out more of an artisanal product. It's all whole bean stuff. So these are a couple just commercially. I saw this at the store the other day. Haven't tried it yet. Irving Farm, New York. But um, it kind of got me with the toasted marshmallow, dark chocolate, hickory uh, notes description. That sounds amazing. So I look forward to trying that. But here's a few very, very popular, you know, kind of Italian brands. Lavazza, uh, Danessi, Ely. All of these, well, these I haven't, let's see. This one here, this intense blend uh, is great. I've tried this one, I love it. Haven't tried these two. One is from Brazil, one's from Guatemala. Single origin, coffee beans, whatever. You're gonna see how those are. But anyways, these are a few that I've had really, really good luck with, so I just figured I'd share that. But 
like I said, there is no end to the variety of coffee available. But having the coffee, having the grinder, then it comes to preparation. And that's really what I want to talk about today because I was pretty surprised to find that a lot of people who are really into coffee just use a drip. And I'm not talking shit about a drip coffee maker, but I think there's some better options. So we're going to talk about that. First and foremost, a French press. Now, this one is awesome because it's insulated, right? Stanley makes it. So the way a French press works, as you can see, there's basically a plunger that serves as a filter. So you dump the ground coffee into the body of it, add water, put this on there, and kind of just let it chill for a few minutes, let it steep. And all that goodness of the coffee is going to be extracted into the hot water. And once it's been sitting for a little bit, give it one of those, boom, ready to pour. The beauty of it is uh, another popular brand you, know, you may or may not be familiar with is Bodum. Bodum makes glass French presses, probably glass, and some of them are double wall, so they're a little more insulated, um, but they're not going to hold the heat like this one. So depending on how strong you like your cup of coffee, you can really let it sit. I also drink a lot of tea, and I can tell you, that, at least from my perspective, the key to a good cup of tea is letting it steep. Problem is, if you're using just say a regular mug, or in this case, a regular French press, you're gonna lose a lot of heat. And I don't know about you, but I like to, whether I'm drinking tea or coffee, I wanna be drinking it at a temperature where it's like just under scalding, burn my tongue off, burn my throat, light it on fire, uh, where it's like just barely possible to drink it. That's how I like it. And having an insulated French press allows you to do that. Uh, now, when it comes to the ratio, right, of coffee to water, you know, uh, there's all different formulas. You could, uh, sometimes you'll see the coffee weighed uh, in terms of grams. You could see it uh, expressed as a volume, volumetric measurement uh, in tablespoons. Uh, same thing with the water. You could me measure the water in grams, measure it in ounces. What I found, just to keep it really simple, is 30 grams of coffee per 10 ounces of water, or 10 or 12. So if I'm using the French press, I think that's for 14 ounces, I use 14 ounces of water, because when you push the plunger down, there's a certain volume at the bottom of the pot. So to make up for what you lose there, I add a little bit extra water. Definitely worth having. I think this is like 50 bucks. They have them on Amazon. I've sent them out as gifts this year to a lot of my friends. And they're like, dude, I don't know why I wasn't using a French press sooner. It's awesome. I love it. This makes about four cups, like eight to eight to ten ounce cups of coffee. And again, the beauty of it, especially if you have friends over, you're entertaining, you could leave it in here. It's not going to get cold. Um, I don't have any affiliation with Stanley. I wasn't paid for this, but I just happen to really, really, really like this product. I have no problem. Oh, there we go. Stanley. Um, have no problem putting my name on it and recommending it to you guys. So that is the French press. Next, you've probably seen one of these. If you are Italian, you probably have used one. If you have friends that are Italian, you've probably seen one. You're probably like, how the F does that work? I remember being a kid and this kind of like baffling me, like, how does that work? Uh, it's so simple. So the top, okay, on threads, you've got this piece that sits in there. All you do, you fill this up with ground coffee. So it's like a slight, slightly rounded at the top. You don't pack it in, you don't, you know, you don't do anything like that. You just leave it slightly rounded, loose. Inside, you fill this up. Now, you could fill this up with cold water. So what you're gonna do once it's all filled and put together, you're gonna put it on the stove. Problem is, it's gonna be on the stove for a little bit before it fully brews. And this whole thing is gonna get pretty hot. And as you can see here, this handle, <laughs> uh, I've had it sometimes a little too far onto the flame and it kind of melts it a little bit. So one thing you could do if you have an electric kettle, or even if you don't have an electric kettle, you could use a pot. You could pre-boil the water, right? So when you add the water to this, see this little, this little valve right here? This goes through onto the inside. You're supposed to fill the water right up to meet the valve. So you add hot water. You've got this filled with coffee, drop it in, thread this on, 
put it on the burner, and what is going to happen is, see this little spout inside? Coffee is going to begin percolating up through that, and it's going to fill the top here. And once it's done brewing, it's going to start spitting. It's going to, you're going to know it's done. Um, and this thing makes a great, great cup of coffee. Point being, in terms of measurements, you don't have to know a measurement. All you have to do is fill that with the coffee. So there's no weighing, there's no measuring. Third way, and I'm going to have to show you over here, is the use of an espresso machine. Um, so let's hold off on that. Even if you didn't have a coffee maker, right? You don't have a, a drip. You don't have a French press. You don't have a percolator pot. You could literally use, all right? You could boil some water. You could dump the coffee grounds in there, put a lid on, let it sit for a minute, filter it out. Boom, you have a cup of coffee. Um, and very, very basic, but even just this method would allow you a lot of exploration in the sense that you've got a couple things to consider, right? Grind size. The finer you grind a coffee, when you put it in hot water, those grinds have more surface area. So you're going to extract a lot more flavor from the coffee. And there's the second factor to consider is the exposure to the water. So you may or may not be familiar with pour over. Pour over is you basically have coffee in you know something like this, and you pour hot water over it and you collect the resulting coffee so the exposure there is very minimal something like this if you fine ground coffee put it in boiling water and put a lid on and let it sit you're going to pull a lot out of that it could start to get bitter it could become what maybe some people would consider over extracted uh, if you keep the grind size very large and only expose it for a minute and then you strain it it's going to be a different cup of coffee. So it all depends on what you like. And you, know, you might be saying, Evan, why would I do any of this shit? Why don't I just go to Starbucks and buy an effing cup of coffee? And you totally could. You could go to McDonald's and buy a cup of coffee. You can go anywhere and buy a cup of coffee. But if coffee is really your thing and you're into it, it's probably worth trying some different stuff because you might find a whole different world. And uh, even just as simple as sending a French press to a few of my buddies, dude, I don't know why I wasn't doing this. This is amazing. It's like a whole different cup of coffee. So I think it's worth playing around with, uh, you know, the different methods, different grind size, uh, and, and different coffees themselves because, I mean, there's pretty much an endless variety out there. Come over here with me. I'm going to show you the espresso machine. So I purchased this espresso machine it's been just over a year. And I'll admit, at first, there was a bit of a learning curve. I went through a lot of frustration and I'm glad that I kept going and got past the point of what is for a lot of people, the point where they probably just, it becomes just a fixture on their countertop or even worse, ends up in a closet. But now that I know it, okay, and I took the time to actually learn it, it's not to sound cheesy, but it's fun to use. You can get a great, great cup of coffee out of this thing. Um, so anybody who's not familiar, well, first of all, this one's a Breville. It's like a Breville Barista Express. Oh, that sounds so cheesy. It was not cheap. I think it was maybe like 600 bucks. It works really, really well. It's got a built-in grinder. Uh, basically, you grind the coffee into the porta filter. You put it in there. Boom, the coffee comes out. Uh, you tamp it. Then you lock it in there. You press the button, coffee comes out. You could froth milk with it and make yourself a really, really nice cup, a cup of cappuccino, or you could just make shots of espresso. Um, so I'm gonna show you this in a minute. So French press, mocha pot, right? That's the Italian thing that comes apart, the mocha pot. You could pretty much boil some grounds if you wanted to in a pot of water and strain them. Use the espresso maker. Of course, you could use a drip, there's pour over, um, but I don't use the drip and the pour over um, just doesn't appeal to me. So these are my primary ways of making coffee. Let's make some coffee. So first, let's make some coffee using the mocha pot. Now I've got three pieces, right? The bottom, piece that goes in the middle that holds the coffee, and the top. First thing I'm gonna do, I filled this with water up to where the valve is. 
okay? I'm gonna dump this in my electric kettle and I'm gonna get that boiling while we do the rest of it. Let's get the coffee. So I have this set to a grind size that's suitable to use in the espresso machine. That would be too fine to use in here. What would happen, okay, if I used coffee that was way too fine is it basically wouldn't percolate, meaning it, the water wouldn't pass through it and go up to the top of the pot. It would just be too hard for the water to pass. So I'm gonna keep it, okay, a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna use it basically, now there's different things you read, okay? Should it be closer to an espresso grind size? Should it be closer to a percolator pot? Because really it, it is kind of what you're doing, right? It's, it's percolating. I'm gonna keep it somewhere in the middle. Okay, I've got this thing here to catch the grinds. I'm gonna hit the start button and let the coffee grind. That should be plenty. Ah, oh, it smells so good. All right, I've got the ground coffee in there. I'm gonna spoon it into here. This thing's already boiling. These things work so fast. They're so nice to have. What I do is just kind of put it in there to hold it. So quite a bit of coffee goes into here. You want it to be just like about to overflow. Okay, just a little bit rounded over at the top. Put the boiled water into here. That pressure valve pops through on the inside so you can see the level and you want the water just up to the level of the valve. Put this in. I'm going to hold the bottom. It's a little hot. Just put boiling water in there. Put it on pretty tight and come over to here because when you put it on the burner, all right, I'm going to put it on high but I'm gonna offset it. So if you look at the way it's on the burner, it's off to the side. So I keep the handle away from the heat. So if I put it right in the middle, I'm gonna just melt that handle right into fucking oblivion. So keep it offset. Give that a minute and it's gonna to start to percolate. I'm gonna show you. So I've got the top of this open up. Oh, there it goes. Ah, so satisfying, isn't it? Something like enjoyable about watching that. So once that starts coming out, all right, I turn this down more like to medium. I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna show you why I close it. It's gonna start, um, once the water starts to run out, it's gonna start to like sputter and kind of shoot everywhere. Very messy. Uh, so keep that closed. So as you can see now, right? See how it starts doing that? That's when it's starting to run out. I'll turn it down even more to more like low, medium low. And once you don't hear anything, then it's done. So right now you could hear it. Hear that noise? Not done yet. Don't touch. So as you can see now, it's pretty much blown its load and um, ready to drink. you guys could smell how great that smells oh, it makes such a rich cup of coffee now don't call that espresso that's not espresso a lot of times people say well yeah I made it in this pot it's espresso you may use it may have used an espresso bean right espresso roast but remember before when I was talking about pressure right, there's a certain amount of pressure in here that builds and forces it up to the top. Pressure would be measured in bars, right? I think using something like this, it's about two bars of pressure. When you use an espresso machine, right? I think it's upwards of like 10 to 12 bars. The pressure, okay, is what forces the extraction of the coffee. It gives you a greater extraction versus, well, say a pour over. There's no pressure at all. It's just, you just literally pour hot water over some ground up coffee beans. 
very different cup of coffee. Not saying it's, this is better, not saying that's worse, just different, which is why I would implore you guys to try different things because you never know what you're going to take a liking to. And if coffee's your thing, try some stuff. You like my face near your cup of coffee? things all right i don't know they're like maybe 30 35 bucks they're cheap get it try it it's worth it even if you don't have a grinder you could buy uh coffee ready for that illy makes it they make it ground it'll have a little logo at the bottom letting you know that it's appropriate for the mocha pot these are just whole beans but they make different grinds one of them is suitable for use in the mocha pot so if you don't have a grinder Get yourself one of these and take it for a ride. Let's make some more coffee. Next up, the French press. One thing I want to mention, right? How many of you guys drink out of a regular mug, ceramic mug versus an insulated mug like a Yeti, etc.? Now, I like drinking out of a Yeti, but sometimes it is also nice when it's really cold in your home. It's not like you have to take your coffee and go where you would want to sit with a hot cup of coffee and literally feel the warmth of the cup. I know that sounds cheesy, but for a lot of people, that is something that is nice, right? You're cold. You want it to warm you up. You want to feel the warmth of the mug. However, what you don't want to do is brew yourself a nice hot cup of coffee and put it into a cold mug. What's it going to do? It's going to just suck all the heat out of that coffee and it's going to go to warming the mug, right? Not good. What I do, right, so say I'm making a, a cup with the French press. I've got enough water in here, okay, so I use a ratio of 25 grams of coffee to 14 ounces of water. So I've got 14 ounces of water in here plus a cup full of water for this. So I'm going to boil the water, all right, and not only am I going to pour water in here to steep the coffee, to brew the coffee, but I'm also going to pour water into here to heat this mug. Then once this is ready, I'm going to dump this water and fill it with the coffee. That way, I have hot coffee going into a hot mug. It's gonna stay nice and hot. It's not gonna just drain all that heat out of it. So, I'm gonna boil the water. I've got my electric kettle, and I'm not trying to sell you guys on anything, but man, it's so nice having one of these. Now, you don't have to buy a smeg. I'm gonna be honest, it's a little overpriced. Whether you buy a smeg, or you buy a Krups, or a Braun, or, um, you know, any other brand, you could probably spend 30, 40, 50 bucks on one of these. This was probably, I don't remember, maybe 120. You're paying for it to look cool on your counter. Functionality wise, it's gonna perform no different. So this is gonna boil. I've got ground coffee in here. I need 25 grams, okay? I'm gonna put the press on my scale, zero it out. And I'm going to add coffee. Now, keep in mind, again, grind size. When you are grinding to be, you know, uh, coffee to be used in a French press, again, you don't want the grind too small um, because it's going to have, you would have a hard time pushing this down. The larger the grounds, the easier the water is going to flow through it and whoop, I'm just going to filter it right out. So when you're using a uh, French press, the grind size is fairly large. I'm going to add 25 grams to this. Each of these, each heaping one is like seven or so grams. Three, well, right around four spoonfuls, all right? It's there. That's ready to go. I'm waiting for this to boil. Like I said, I'm going to put some in here to heat the cup. I'm going to put some in here to brew the coffee. Coffee's going to steep. Once it steeps, we're going to filter it. Dump this water out of here. We got a nice hot cup. I'm gonna fill with nice hot coffee. Oh, this just clicked off, which means it has boiled. I'm gonna add to here first, right? And then to here. So 
take out enough to fill the cup, and then I know I've only got 14 ounces left. It's back on the stove. And this thing has an arrow at the top. When you want to pour it, you put the arrow to the spout, which opens it up. As for right now, I offset it to keep it closed. And again, to keep the plunger up at the top. So right now, those coffee grinds are just kind of steeping in that hot water. Again, almost like tea. Right? And it's going to pull all that goodness out of the coffee. I let it sit, uh, to be honest, sometimes upwards of five minutes. Uh, you could go less. You could go longer. You have the luxury of being able to go longer because this is insulated. Um, but this is what I'm talking about when, I, when I'm saying to experiment. Right? It's kind of fun. Right? You've got... Uh, well, with this, you're going to keep a fairly consistent grind size, but you've got all different coffees to try. You could let it sit shorter period of time, let it sit longer. You could try a press versus the mocha pot versus the drip, which you're probably already using. Or maybe you do go to Starbucks and you say, you know what, let me try it at home. You add up. I did this once because a friend of mine was breaking my balls. And I added up what he spent at Starbucks each year. And within the first year, okay, I was able to not only pay for the espresso machine, <laughs> but it's still come out cheaper. Granted, maybe not everybody wants to be bothered with this. And that's a fair point. Maybe say, listen, dude, that's all cool, but I'm not gonna do any of that shit. I'm just gonna go to Starbucks, I'm gonna buy my cup of coffee and get on with my day. And that's totally fair. But for anybody else who likes to, you know, have a little fun with it, it could be cool. All right, that's been about five minutes. I'm going to dump, well, you know what? I'm going to plunge first. You plunge and then dump. Oh, it's so fun, isn't it? You know, you know, you need you. You know, you want to do that. And the arrow to the spout. just so much more rich than what you're going to likely get out of your drip coffee maker. And plus, this is fun. Wasn't that fun? You had fun watching me. Imagine how much fun you would have actually doing it. Come on. Everybody wants to push the plunger down. Got a beautiful cup of coffee. If you had friends over, all right, you could fit another three more cups in here. It could sit while you guys talk. You could pour more. It's going to sting nice and hot. Great thing to have. Um, I feel everybody should have one. And um, that is the French press. Next, we're going to use the espresso machine. All right, let's use the espresso machine. I'm going to make a cappuccino with it. You don't have to. I can make just shots of espresso, whatever. Um, hear that? So there's a compressor in there. Um, obviously, that's what the machine uses to make pressure and there's a heating element right so commercial ones they're hard plumbed into the house meaning they have a water supply plumbed to them this one you fill up the tank in the back with water and it draws from that there's the built-in grinder which we're going to utilize right now this thing the porta filter sits in there all you do is tap it starts okay I've got it set to turn off at a certain you know to fill with a certain amount and then shut now again I'm not I'm not a barista okay I'm not a pro at this I'm just a dude who figured it out enough to make a decent cup of coffee so if you're someone out there who's watching this and you're a professional and you're saying, oh my God, he's doing this wrong or he's doing that wrong. I apologize, all right? But I know enough, I think, to at least maybe help some people get a little further along and maybe they already are. So I give this a very light tamp because I like a little bit more coffee in there. It comes with this tool that you would use to whatever, but just kind of from using it, I know exactly how much I want in there. And you want to be get this really even and then give it a pretty firm tamp. 
goes in there. I've got hot water in this mug. Alright, because I'm making a cappuccino, I do use sugar. Put that in there. We're going to watch the pressure on this build. Now, that would be considered two shots of espresso. Normally, you would just add hot water to this, then the milk. I run it again. Now, most people who are a professional or you know know more about this than I do would probably say, "Oh, you shouldn't do that. It's then it's going to over extract uh, from the grounds." I don't know. I do it this way, and it comes out great. So I just literally hit it again and let it run through again because obviously there's still more to extract from the coffee grounds. Um, but I'm sure somebody in the comments is going to smash me and say like oh you shouldn't do that it's um it's gonna fuck with the feng shui of the coffee but i don't know it comes out good like this so whatever just trust me now you could use half and half this believe it or not i don't i don't use dairy right silk makes this i know it sounds really really fucking pansy this is oat and coconut milk based. I kid you not, it comes out better with this than it would even with half and half. It comes out incredible. We'll put some of this in here. Turn this on. Just a little stir. Okay. Now. Gotta froth it. You're basically just adding air to it and at the same time heating it up. So it's gonna like pretty much quadruple in the volume. Um, from all the introduction of that air into it and it's going to make the cappuccino in addition to making it richer and creamier it's also going to make it more airy now my cameraman does not like coffee he says he doesn't like coffee not gonna like this one. I said, dude, I think you will like this. So he's gonna try it and see how it is and see if we can win him over. But I'm telling you right now, this is delicious. I've had a coffee from Starbucks. It's not this good. So my camera guy tried it and he said it was the best coffee he ever had, but it still tastes like coffee. <laughs> and at that rate, he just doesn't love it. So I said, okay, fuck you. Give it back to me because this is way too good to be wasted on someone who doesn't absolutely love it. Oh, it's so good. I hope you found this helpful. Again, for you guys watching, I'm not a proclaimed expert on the subject of coffee. This is just some stuff I've learned along the way um, through my exploration, and I found it fun. I feel that I'm able to produce a pretty decent cup of coffee, at least better than what I have when I, like when I go other places now, I'm like, yo, this coffee sucks. Um, so that's gotta say something. <sighs> the mocha pot, right? The espresso machine, the French press, it's all different ways to do it. It's all fun, it's all cool, um, so much, you know, to explore in terms of different roasts, different beans, and, you know, even if you're somebody who uh, is lactose intolerant or you stay away from dairy, this stuff is awesome. There's a lot of really, really gross, lousy, you know, half and half alternatives out there. 
This one's excellent. That's pretty much it. You know, any questions you have, hit me up down below. And it's good to be back here on YouTube. Appreciate you guys for watching. And um, we'll see you soon.